Hello everyone and welcome to another video review. That we will today we'll be reviewing the HIS HD Radeon 5850 video card. The HIS uh, Radeon HD 5850 in the box includes a copy of Dirt 2, a Crossfire Bridge, a VGA to DVI dongle, uh, two 6-pin power adapters, so from 6-pin to two Monolex connectors, um, a driver's disc and manual and case badge, and the card itself. Um, for uh, just a worded note, the drivers on the disc might be a little old, so I would recommend going to ATI uh, .ca to download the latest drivers. Now, looking at the card, um, looking at the front of the card, you can see they went with a, a dual card slot design, um, and has a blower style fan. Um, so basically, it sucks in cool air from the fan, pushes the air across the aluminum finned copper based uh, heat pipe. Uh, cooling uh, solution and ports it out the back and also on the top of the card there's a small hole for more air to get out um, now looking at the back of the card um, you can see that there's two six pin power adapters not a six and an eight this card doesn't use a lot of power like the 48 like the 5870 um, it's bigger brother so this one uh, is a it, it does run re relatively cooler and it also um, also uses a lot less power so um, it only has two six pin adapters um, then now coming around to the back of the card, uh, you can see there's two DVI ports, there's uh, one HDMI, and a display port. Um, if you don't know what display port is, it's a new style of port, it's going to be replacing everything. Um, if you want any more information, just Google it. Um, you can also see, uh, coming around to the back, you can also see there's two crossfire bridges, you're going to need both of those to connect to, uh, to do a dual card or quad card setup. Um, one thing I would like to see on this card was maybe a backplate on the back to protect the back of the card. Not even, like, some cards have it just because the cooler memory, because it's a metal plate, but uh, even just to protect the card, because I know, like, a lot of NVIDIA cards have that, and I really like that. It's a good feature. All right, so now we're going to benchmark the card and see what it actually can do after, you know, looking at the card. Well, it's the games we'll be using is Crisis Warhead, Crisis, Stock Clear Sky, uh, Dirt 2, and DirectX 11. All the other games will be in DirectX 10. Um, also, 3D Mark 06 and Far Cry 2. The uh, reason why you don't see those two is I bought them online, so you don't see the actual cases in the picture. But, um, quick quick disclaimer, um, the processor, my, the computer that we are using, uh, it only has a Q6600 in it. That's at 3.4 gigahertz. I believe it's uh, bottlenecking it, um, but I will soon be replacing the uh, processor with that, with either the uh, new uh, i7s when they come out, or the generation that's out right now at the time of the review. So uh, the frame rates could be a little off of what other reviewers are doing due to the uh, nature of some of the older hardware in the system that this card is being tested in. But without further ado, um, here are the results. Now, bottlenecking aside, the performance this card puts out is phenomenal. Over uh, a 4870, um, even just upgrading from that, like a 4870 can play every game perfectly, um, pretty much. Like almost every mainstream game can play. Um, now, going to a 5850, it can play everything and then some. Like cranking Crisis at full and having two times anti aliasing on. It's just still running it at perfect 30 frames a second. Like, I've never seen this type of performance before. And if I had a, you know, an i7 coupled with it, the performance would be even better. And I'll just imagine if you put two of these uh, in Crossfire. It's it just, it's amazing how much performance this card has. And for a price point of $300, you can't go wrong um, if you're looking for an upgrade. So say if you're coming from an older generation like 8800 GT, or something like that. This is a perfect upgrade if you're looking in the ballpark to spend around $300. Uh, it's a good card. It comes packed with lots of features, and it looks like a Batmobile, so you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> um, 
And if you are a power conscientious guy, it uses less power than the previous generation ATI cards. It also produces less heat. At I the idle temperature is at 36 degrees um, in my system. Now, on my system, I have a fan blowing directly on the card, and I have a fan that sucks cool air from the front of the case, and it blows air right on the front of the card where it sucks in air. So I have two fans blowing air on the card to keep help keep it cool. So that also helps. Um, another quick tip, uh, if you want to keep the temperatures low on the card, is go in the ATI driver tool and lower and manually fet set the fan speed to 36% and leave it there. The card will never go past, um, I think around, it, it will never overheat, it'll never like go past a, a really high temperature, it'll always run cool and at 36% fan speed you can barely notice it. Um, once you get speakers and stuff going, you know, fan speed, fan sound doesn't really matter because once you turn up your music or turn on your games, you're not going to hear it. So it doesn't really matter. Um, the fan in the card is actually really quiet. And the, so with that, um, overall, this is a great card. Uh, great bang for your buck. Uh, I've had 10 to 15% slower than a 5870. Uh, um, you are getting a great deal. So. Without further ado, guys, I will see you next time. And remember to subscribe and rate five stars. And have a good one.